And I believe that she is joined by the Minister of Arts and Culture um, that uh, basically are launching Reconciliation Month there. Uh, Ayanda, good morning to you once again. Once again, Leanne, as part of the proceedings today, 21 white doves will be released as a gesture to foster peace and harmony in South Africa. They also will be a wreath laying ceremony. You can see the wreaths right here behind me and the opening of where we're standing right now, a garden of remembrance to honor women, children and the elderly, black and white, who suffered throughout the anglo Boer War, what is now termed as South Africa's war. But something else that will be happening, and it's happening right now as we speak, will be a symbolic handover of the cover of this book, Black Participation and Suffering in the South African War. Minister Natim Teta will be handing over a cover that is framed of this book to the chairperson of the Council of Museum, Dr. J.P. Fandamava, who will then hand over this very book. So I'm going to step aside and let you watch and see. Well, there you have it. Quite a significant occasion indeed, Mr. Minister. And something that was undocumented for quite a while, the role of black South Africans in this war, be it as interpreters, as Sol Plyke was, or in different capacities. How is this important in a bid to foster peace in South Africa going forward? It's extremely important, uh, Ayanda. Um, here, we're correcting the wrongs of the past. Um, uh, African people and blacks in general uh, have always been taken as subhuman in our history. And even the history books were written wrongly. We are correcting that. The, the war which started in 1899 and ended up with the Treaty of Ferienheim of in 1902 was a South African war. African people participated in it. But when the history was written, they were excluded from that. We are including this as launching the reconciliation month of having and building one South African nationhood. So this is what we are doing today. It's a significant day because, um, as you know, the African uh, proverb which uh, says that until lions have their own historians, the tale of the hunt will always favor the hunter. Today, both uh, leaders, Afrikaner leaders, and, and their government have agreed that let's tell the truth about what happened in that war. Let's expose lies and ensure that we move together as one in building this South Africa. We still suffer from the events of the past in this country. You just have to go to social media platforms and you see the gall that is spewed by uh, some of the racists that remain in the country and some of, of, of the hate and anger on both sides of the fence. Then you look at developed uh, countries such as the US and how they, after years of democracy, still suffer from race relations and tensions thereof. Is it fair for us to, to assume that we can reconcile and move forward after just 21 years we can reconcile uh, the the journey started in 1994 and we are moving on that journey obviously you you are not going to have everybody agreeing with you but eventually they will understand that uh, there is no alternative for the truth the truth must be told all the time no matter how you feel about it, whether you like what happened in the past or not, but it must be told as it happened. And we are telling a South African, a true South African story in a true way and how people participated in this story.
Let's take a look at uh, the current context where we are. Not too long ago, we experienced the road to must fall movement where statues were defaced and there was a lot of tension that was boiling over. Where are we in terms of the resolutions that were made then? There were uh, some announcements that there would be consultation processes, that there would be efforts to try and unite South Africans to discuss race relations. How far are we and have you started implementing those discussions? Well, the conversations are continuing because we have to converse uh, to ourselves as South Africans. Um, we covered all the provinces uh, in consulting people about the public spaces, what should go to the public spaces, what should not go there. What we agree on, and uh, we agreed even in the summit, is that whether we like it or not, we cannot change history. History happened, and it must be told as it happened. What we need to agree on is how do we collectively uh, move forward in one heritage. We may share history, but not necessarily heritage. The heritage which we have to share this time around is the heritage of peace, of democracy, of transformation. It therefore means that in the public spaces, there would be bottom lines. If you ask South Africans to have in the public spaces a fair vote, it would be like asking Germans to have Hitler in their public spaces. So there have to be reconciliation means that we've got to be moving together in tandem without hurting each other and understanding that the process is a two-way street. So this is what is happening and this is what we are experiencing here today. And it will affect all uh, the sectors of society and different stations of society. Minister, we have run out of time. We'll have to leave it there, I'm afraid. But launching Reconciliation Month in December and the build-up to the 16th, Minister Natim Tetwa, a number of our programs will be running concurrently to the show this morning. So do stay with us for the regular updates. Right now, a quick ad break. Morning Live continues after this. Stay with us.